questions, feel free to type into the chat box um, or you can unmute yourself. Welcome to Mindful Movement. My name is Rachel. For those of you who are new faces or just joining us, um, we'll be working on some spinal and joint mobility, some sensory input, um, proprioception, all of that good stuff. Uh, so just go ahead and make sure that you've got a nice big distance around you so you won't hit anything. The only equipment that you're going to need today. Hi, Monica. Hi, Leslie. Welcome. Um, the only equipment that you're going to need today is a ball shaped object of some sort, preferably with letters and numbers. Um, but if that's not available to you, you can also use a rolled up pair of socks, preferably something interesting for your eyes to look at with a pattern, a dog toy, a rag, something that you can kind of throw around. You. I'm not getting sound. Oh, let's see. I'm not getting sound. Um, oh, that's Helene. Okay. Or wait, was that Helene? Because she's muted. Okay, sorry, everybody. Let me just chat her really quick. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Hopefully she gets that message. Okay. Um, so yes, you're gonna need a ball shaped object of some sort and then two pencils. If pencils are hard to hold, cooking utensils, forks, any of that works. Great. So, and then just as a reminder, as always, we're assuming that you've checked in with some kind of a medical professional today, um, especially when we start doing some of the vestibular work where we're moving the body and the eyes around. If you get dizzy, when you get dizzy, slow down, back off. Um, you can close your eyes, you can get a sip of water, you can move a little bit slower. So move at your own pace um, and listen to your body. Alrighty. Hi, Roma, welcome. Oh, nice. I like that ball. Okay. So we'll come to a seated position here, seated or standing. We'll start with our body check-in. So we'll close the eyes if that feels right. And let's just first start with noticing our breath. Noticing how shallow or deep your breath is going right now. And then seeing if you can invite that breath a little bit deeper. So I'm going to have you put both hands over your low belly. And with each inhale, I want you to feel your low belly press into your hands. And with each exhale, you feel your low belly gently sink back in. So we're not forcing anything This should be happening naturally. And if it's hard for you to find this diaphragmatic breath, I just want you to think about dropping that breath down. You might still be breathing in the chest and that's okay. Just try to invite that breath a little bit deeper. With the inhale, the belly goes out. And with the exhale, the belly goes in. I'm going to do a counted breath. We're going to do um, a four count. Okay, so you'll stay with me here. So let's inhale. Four, three, two, one. Exhale. Four, three, two, one. Hold your breath. Four, three, two, one. And then inhale. Four, three, two, one. Exhale, three, two, one. Hold, three, two, one. And inhale, three, two, one. Exhale, three, two, one. Hold, three, two, one. And inhale, three, two, one. Great. We'll open the eyes. Yep. Just a good way to calm the nervous system there. We'll bring both fingertips underneath the collarbones. And we're just going to find that gentle tapping under the collarbones, across the chest. And again, just noticing how your breath is, where your breath is. 
seeing if you can stay with nasal breathing. If you're able to just breathe through your nose, try to do that. Good. We'll bring hands to the scalp and we're gonna give ourselves a scalp massage. I like to use my fingernails for this one and it really turns into more of a head scratch for me. But if you like to rub your scalp more, then you can do that. So just really whatever feels good, whatever stimulation your head is craving, give it. You can trace your hairline, you can rub. Okay, good. And then relax for a sec. And just notice anything that's going on in the head, maybe a nice little buzz there. And then we'll take the ears. So I'm kind of grabbing at the base of my ear and I'm just gonna draw my, gent my ear in a gentle circle. Up and around and down. Not pulling too hard, just enough where I feel a tug back and then switch direction. So this is just all of this work we're doing is helping to stimulate some of our cranial nerves, which can translate to helping to calm the nervous system. It can translate to more efficient movement. Yeah. And then grab the top of your ears and I want you to pull your ears up towards the sky and then back behind you and then up towards the sky one more time. Great, okay. Using your knuckles or your fingers, I prefer my knuckles for this one, we're just gonna find a jaw rub. So I'm rubbing from the top of my cheekbones down towards my lower jaw. And I'm kind of outlining, I'm tracing the shape of my bottom jaw. So you'll notice there's some soft tissue in that area. And that's the area I'm trying to stay on. And as you do this, let your jaw go slack. Let that jaw hang down. You can even make noises if it feels good to make a noise. Uh, noticing if there's a difference between the two sides. Okay, good, and relax. We'll shake the hands out. Yep, we'll flick the hands if you're able to flick the fingers like you've got water on your hands. And then we'll shake the whole body out. If you're standing, you can shake the legs out. Yeah, we're gonna shake a little bit longer than we normally do. So just whatever feels good. Yep. Great, okay. And then we're just gonna come into that rotational swing. So rotating to the left, tapping my low back, and then rotating right and tapping my low back. Yep, and if you're standing, you can do the standing, let your hips come with you. And my arms are just following the momentum of my body. Mm -hmm. Find your breath again. See if you can return to nasal breathing if you're not already. Okay, good. And we'll bring arms out to the side, palms facing down. Okay, we're gonna find something called an S wave. So I bring my right hand overhead and then I reach my right hand as if I were trying to touch the area in between my shoulder blades. My left hand reaches down and then I reach that hand up. So I'm trying to make those two hands meet in the center of my back. One arm is up, one arm is down. Okay, and then arms come back out towards the side and switch. Left arm is overhead, right arm is down below, and then the hands try to reach up to meet each other. Yeah, and I just want you to find this a little bit more flowy now. I'll take my watch off because that's digging into my back here. So just alternating from one side into the other, Waking the shoulders up. Good, last one. And back to the center, awesome. All right, we're gonna do our full body tapping. So we'll start on whichever arm you'd like. 
working down the inside of the arm and up the outside of the arm. But today, I want you to switch. So you're gonna do down the other side of the arm and up the outside, and then we're gonna switch again. So I'm going down my left and up my left, across my chest, down my right, and up my right. Mm -hmm. So we're still following that meridian working down the inside and up the outside, but we're just alternating between the two sides. Mm -hmm. This is my last one here. Good. Coming back to the belly, we'll find that clockwise circular press into the belly. And I've been encouraging you the past few weeks where as you feel more comfortable with this, for those of you that have been taking this class for a while, I want to encourage you that as you find that clockwise circle, try to press in a little bit more. Again, we're not, um, we're not going for anything super uncomfortable here. I'm just pushing into my belly as much as I can where I feel a little bit of a press back, where my body is telling me, okay, that's enough. Mm -hmm. We go clockwise because that aids with digestion. Not wrong to go the other way, just, just helpful for the digestion. And you might notice there's maybe a sticky spot in your belly. If you have hernias, maybe avoid that area or avoid this altogether and just do a soft belly rub. So again, listen to your body here. But if you've got that sensitive area, maybe spend a little bit of extra time where you press your hands in and then you invite a couple of breaths into that area. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, we're gonna bring hands to the base of the ribs and we're gonna find that outlining of the bones. So I'm moving my hands from the back of my ribs to the front of my ribs, just tracing my outline. You can use your knuckles here. If you're even doing this kind of work at home during your free time, you can use a ball, a soft squishy ball to do this kind of work. and breathing into your hands as you do this. So now I want you trying to widen that rib cage with your breath as you outline the lower ribs. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna move to tracing the outline of the pelvis. So the very top of your hips. I still like to outline from back to front. Maybe if you've got a tender spot, you hold and you breathe into it. Great, okay. Coming to the legs, we're gonna tap down the outside of the legs. And then up the insides. I always forget to say this, but if it's accessible and safe for you to slip your socks and your shoes off, go for it. It will give your feet a new sensation on the ground. Down the outside and up the inside. Make sure you also get the top of your thighs. If you've been missing the back of your thighs, get the back of your thighs or the back of your calves. Great. We'll come to the lower leg. I'm just going to change position so you can see my foot. For those of you that have access to your feet, you could start to find that bottle twisting. So as if you were twisting a bottle cap off of your toes, or you can weave your fingers between your toes, okay? If that's available for you. Otherwise, I just want you massaging the lower leg. So rubbing that leg from ankle to the knee. So moving upward, just so we get some of that stagnant fluid going back up towards your heart. It might look like a squeeze and release. It might look like a rub. It might look like giving a little bit of extra love around the ankle specifically. 
Go ahead and switch feet. So toe weaving or a rub from ankle to the knee. Mm -hmm. And same thing here, if you've got a sensitive spot, maybe you spend a little bit more time there. This is a really important area to give some love to every once in a while because it's really easy, especially for my seated athletes for fluids to, for the retention of fluids down here. So the more we can get that area pumping, um, the better it's gonna help us with those lower legs, with circulation, with all of that good stuff. Okay, we'll come back to the hands, spend a little bit of time with the hands. So I want you to rub your hands together. And then can you rub the outside of your hands? Rubbing the knuckles on one side and then the other. Good. And then can I trace the outline of my fingers? It's okay if, you, if your fingers stay closed for this, but just tracing the outline with one hand, going in between each finger. So climbing the mountain and then dipping down, climbing the mountain and dipping down. So just tracing the outline of one hand all the way from thumb to pinky and back. And then we'll switch sides. Yeah. The amount of space that our hands and our lips and our feet take up in our brain, the amount of real estate they take up in our brain um, is a lot. So this doing this sensory input work to those areas can be really beneficial to stimulate those areas. Yeah. Okay. Good. So we'll bring hands back out to the side of our body, arms out to the side. And let's just start with the rib translation. So gliding the ribs left and then gliding the ribs to the right. Trying to keep your ribs and your shoulders parallel with the floor. And now as you do this, and I want you to do this safely, so you might need to hold on to a chair or something. I want you to tip a little bit further so that maybe as I shift to the left, my right butt cheek is pulling off of the chair. And as I shift to the right, can I lift my left butt cheek off of the chair? Shifting the left, lifting that right butt cheek off and vice versa. And if you're standing, you could do the same thing standing, but you're just balancing on one leg, balancing on the other leg, and really shifting your ribs as if you were reaching for something that you really wanted to the side of you. You can use your hand for support if you need. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. And then hands are going to come in front of you as if you were, in fact, you know what, let's hold on to, go ahead and grab your ball. It can be big, big or little, but your ball shaped object of some sort, just to give you some, some biofeedback into the hands. Okay, good. So you're going to reach that forward like I was trying to really hand this ball off to somebody as far in front of me as I can. Yep. And then you're going to bring it down towards the floor. Pull it in towards your body and sit up. Yep. First reach that ball up towards the ceiling. Then lean forward if you safely can. Pretend like you're handing that ball to someone who's standing in front of you. Bring it down towards the floor. In towards your body and roll up. Yep. Up towards the ceiling. Reach that ball to pass it off way in front of you down towards the floor, rolling back up. Can we reverse directions? Down towards the floor, and if you're standing, you're doing the same movement. Reach up away from you, pass that ball off, bring it up to the sky, and back in. Two more. Down towards the floor, reach it out away from you. I want you to imagine pressing down through your feet, even if you don't have sensation there, I want you thinking about it in towards your body. 
down towards your floor. Pass it off in front of you. Reach, reach, reach up towards the ceiling and in towards your body. Okay. If you can hold that object with one hand, I'm just going to have you hold it with one hand. Otherwise, we'll keep both hands on it. I want you to take that ball, reach it behind you to the right, as if you were trying to pass it to somebody behind you to the right, and then bring it back to the center. Hug it into your chest. Yep. Reach it behind you to the right. Hug it into your chest. Now reach it up behind you and to the right. So shooting for that upper right hand corner behind you. Bring it in, give it a hug. Yep. Again, up and to the right. Keep your eyes on the ball and then in. Now down and to the right. Like you were handing it off to a little kid down there. <laughs> down and to the right. And back in. Good, we'll switch sides. So left hand holding the ball, if that is challenging for you, both hands can stay on there. Rotate to the left, eyes stay on the ball. So it's at shoulder height now. Bring it into the chest and hug. Yep, out behind you to the left. Bring it in and hug. Up and to the left, like you were handing it to somebody really tall. And hug in. Up behind you to the left. Hug in. Down behind you, pass it to the little puppy or the little baby on the floor. And hug. Last one. Down. And then hug. Awesome. Okay. Let's drop that ball just to find our, our check and our recheck. Okay, so we'll just start with a few overhead arm raises. So remember, this is the part of the class where we do a series of movements, but we're using it as your, your reassessment tool. So I want you comparing this movement, noticing your range of motion, the difference between the two sides, your speed of movement, your ease of movement, etc. Okay, we'll bring hands to the center, palms touching. Rotate to the right and rotate left. Just noticing how this is feeling, how far you're getting. Do you find it hard to breathe the more you rotate? I certainly do. <laughs> Sometimes that can also get easier. Good, let's just do cervical rotation. So just head and neck looks to the right and looks to the left. Back and forth. If I'm noticing that range of motion. And then center. And we'll find internal and external shoulder rotation here. I always like to look at my comparison between the two sides. So for those of you who can't see me, I have my goalpost arms up and I'm swiveling my hands down and up. Again, just comparing. Yep. Uh, if you're a standing athlete, you could be doing a sit to stand. You could be doing a forward hip hinge. You could even be doing a single leg balancing. Um, or a, for my floor athletes, you could also be doing a push up on the ground. Okay, great. So let's grab the letter ball. We're going to do it a little bit different. I'm going to layer on differently today than I have the past couple of weeks. So for those of you who, who have been with me and know what we're doing, I'm just going to have you go right into playing letter ball with yourself. I'm just going to continue to explain that for, um, for any new faces that are on here today. Okay, but if you know what you're doing, just go right into playing letter ball. Okay, so for those of you who are new, you're holding the ball in towards your chest, bring it away from your body. You look at the ball, you Pin your eyes on a specific letter or number. I would say it, so I see a W. Pull it in. Bring it out to a different place around your body. Z, pull it in. Pull it out. Eight, pull it in. So I'm just pulling that ball away and in towards me, and I'm locking my eyes on a specific number or letter on the ball. Making sure that I'm really bringing that ball in a 
full 360 degrees around me though. If this feels pretty easy for you and if you're able to play catch with yourself, I want you to then progress to playing catch with yourself, stopping it right where you catch it and then reading the number or the letter on the ball. You can play catch with a partner. You can throw it against a wall if that's available for you. Making sure you're getting to all of those places around you. Okay, I'm going to bring some brain speed games into this here, but it's going to be slightly different. So when you see a, when you catch it or when you move it around you and you see a letter, I want you to say out loud a word that that letter starts with. Okay. When you see a number, I'm going to have you add seven, the number seven to that number. And then you're going to say that number instead. Okay. So if I landed on a three, I would add seven to that and I would say 10 instead of three. And you're going to do that for all the numbers. When you land on a letter, so W, water, just think of any word with, that starts with that letter. Okay, I know this can be limiting with the letters, but you're gonna have to get creative here. So add seven to all of the numbers and you're just trying to make that decision as quickly as you can. For those of you who didn't like math in school, I'm sorry, but <laughs> bear with me here. This is, this is good for your brain. <laughs> yeah, what if, <laughs> what if you're bad at math? Um, if seven is a really hard number, maybe drop it down to five. But I also, I want it to be hard. I want it to be challenging. If it takes you a few seconds, that's totally, <laughs> that's totally fine. And seven is an awkward number to add. So that's why I picked it. Yeah. Good. I'm just watching everybody here. <laughs> I'm getting some funny comments of why, how people avoided math when studying in school, depending on the degree they got. Yes, I know. I feel you. I feel you. <laughs> there are reasons why we avoid things and maybe those are in re re good reasons why it's important to return back to them. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to change it. Keep playing. For the letter you catch, go one letter past it. So if I catch a K, um, uh, I would go to an L and I would say lake, right? Oh. Yeah, okay, and I would say lake. <laughs> I had to think about that one. If you catch a number, you're now going to subtract seven. Yes, you can yell out celebrities. I love that. Uh, <laughs> That's good, Nicole. Um, so subtract seven. And now when you see a letter, go one letter past it and think of a word with that letter. Remember, I want it to be quick. I want your brain to make that decision quickly in terms of it's, it's okay if there's a pause, but that's the piece we're working on. Yeah, that's the brain speed part of it. Your brain is having to make a decision and then you're having to Sorry, you're having to integrate the information and then you're having to make a quick decision. So that's what this is about. Subtract seven, that means that you might go into some negative numbers. That's okay. It's okay if you're moving slower. Maybe do 10 more throws. Be kind to yourself.
Yeah. Yeah, really good, everybody. When you've finished those 10 throws, yeah, I love it. Um, go ahead and relax. We can put the ball down. Okay, and let's just do one quick recheck in here. So we'll find the overhead arm raise. Noticing if there was a difference. Good. Let's do shoulder internal and external rotation. Yeah. Yeah, and Julie, that's that's fine. In fact, I can give you um, I'll I'll type you, I'll give you some suggestions for that next time. Yeah, noticing if there's any internal or external rotation differences. Hands come together, find that thoracic rotation side to side. That one got a little bit better for me. And we'll do cervical rotation. So just your head and your neck moving. Uh, what am I missing? If you're a standing athlete, maybe you're doing sit to stands, you're doing hip hinges, you're doing a single leg balance, or if you're on the floor, you're doing a push up. Yeah, yeah. For the people who don't have um, a letter, number, or ball, sometimes assigning, yeah, maybe I'll just talk about this now. If you have, um, if your object has different colors, you can just, instead of when I say letters and numbers, you can say like, for the dark colors, I'll do this. For the light colors, I'll do that. Um, that can depend on the socks or the dog toy you're using, but just assigning something to the dog toy, um, you can do that with. Also, you don't even have to worry about that. Really, the main point of the game is just that you're moving this around your body and your eyes and your head and your neck are moving around with you. That's really the most important part. The brain speed is just kind of an addition. So if it doesn't make sense to add in the brain speed, don't worry about it. Yeah, because you've got, you've got the most important part. Okay, so I'm gonna have you grab your pencils or your cooking utensils or whatever it is that you're using. Okay. We're gonna bring those pencils all the way out to the side of the body. And I'm gonna to start to bring them inward towards each other just a little bit until they're in my periphery vision. And then I'm gonna bring them in a little bit more. My head is, is straight forward so that my eyes can jump back from pencil to pencil. Um, for those of you who are blind or visually impaired, I want your head to actually move from object to object, from hand to hand for this one. Otherwise, just your eyes are going to jump from side to side. Okay, so you're just going to, so we're just holding the pencils for there right now, jumping the eyes back and forth from left pencil to right pencil, making sure those pencils come into focus each time. But you're trying to go as quick as you can. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go ahead and switch those pencils now. So one pencil is up, one pencil is down. You're doing the same thing. Your head isn't moving, just your eyes are moving. Unless you're blind or visually impaired. And then I want your head moving with you, going from object to object. Otherwise, just your eyes are moving. Go as quickly as you can. Very good. Relax both arms down. Bring one pencil out in front of you. We're going through these just a little bit quicker today. One pencil in front of you. So we're working on the converging. So this is good for eye tracking and for moving objects coming at you or passing by you. So you're looking at the tip of the pencil. Let me get a little bit closer to the screen here. Um, Lori, I'm going to give you a different one. Just hang with me for a sec. Okay, looking at the tip of the pencil, you're bringing that pencil in towards your face. 
when you start to see two pencils slowly pull it away from you so that tip of the pencil should be lined up with that area right between your eyes yeah yeah you all know what you're doing okay when you see two pencils take it away for those of you wearing glasses if you can see the pencil clearly and take your glasses off continue to do that without glasses if it's too blurry leave your glasses on no worries okay I, for example, I have my contacts in, so I'm not going to take my contacts out. So it's really not a big deal. It's just um, just an, an option for you. Okay. And really making sure you're pulling that pencil in evenly and you're not favoring one eye. Okay. For those of you who can't see, we're going to hold that pencil. We're going to bring that pencil um, a little higher than your head and you're gonna move the pencil in a circle, a big circle in the front of your body and your eyes and your head and your chest are gonna follow that pencil. So this is working more of the, um, the vestibular system. So maybe do four pencil circles in one way, four pencil circles in the other way. Yeah, yeah, but hang on, hang on. So those are, that option is only for my people who are blind or visually impaired. Otherwise, I want you doing the converging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just, I'm just giving different options for that. But that was good listening on, on a few of your parts. <laughs> okay, just maybe do a few more of those pencil push-ups. Okay, good. And then when you're done, drop one of your pencils and we're just going to hold on to one of them and we're going to bring a little bit more movement into that. Okay. So uh, maybe holding on with your right hand. And for those of you that are maybe one sided, it's okay if you can't hold a pencil on that side, you're just going to use objects around the room instead of the pencil. Okay. Otherwise holding that pencil in front of you, bring it up and over and behind you. So I'm drawing this big circle behind me and then down towards the floor and then up. So I'm basically doing a one armed backstroke, but my eyes are staying on the tip of the pencil the whole time. And my head is staying on the tip of the pencil the whole time. So everyone will be doing this one all together. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and switch directions. If you get dizzy, back off, take a break, maybe grab some water, and we'll finish in the center. Go ahead and switch hands. Same thing, other side. Single, single arm backstroke, eyes stay on the tip of the pencil, and your eyes and your head dictate how far that pencil can go behind you. So if you start to lose track of it with your eyes, you might be drawing a circle that's too big. Switch directions. Mm -hmm. And then come back to the center. Awesome. Okay, we can put that pencil down. Okay, so for my seated athletes, I'm maybe give you a couple different variations here, seated and standing. We're going to do um, some of the body twisting. So seated athletes are going to cross their arms over their chest. I suggest for this one, so this is more vestibular base, that you move slow with this unless you've done it before. Okay, so move slow, maybe start with a small range of motion and then you can increase both of those. We're going to go right into it. So I'm going to have you Draw a big circle with your whole upper body. Your eyes are coming with you. So I'm bringing my head and my neck and my eyes with me as I circle. Maybe only do three or four in one direction and then three or four in the other direction. My standing athletes are just gonna stand in one spot and you're gonna turn and spin. I'm going pretty slowly. I'm just kind of rotating my feet around me. I stop after maybe three or four spins and then I turn and I spin in the opposite direction. You can also do your spins in your chair in your, if you've got a, a wheelchair where it's easy for you to spin around. 
you can also try doing it like that. Okay. So when you when you get dizzy, stop, take a break, let everything settle, and then you'll go in the other direction. Okay. If you've gone in both directions, go ahead and take another break. <laughs> yeah, because I don't want to overdo it here. I want you to meet your boundary. I don't want you to go too far past it. Okay, and then we're going to come into a little bit more of brain and tapping work here. Okay, good. So we're going to start by tapping the knees. So if you're in a standing position, same thing. You can tap your thighs. We'll tap the knees, cross the chest, tap your shoulders. Tap the knees, switch the cross with your arms, tap your shoulders. Yep. And I just want you to go back and forth with that pattern. Tapping the knees, cross, tap the knees, switch the cross. Cross, switch the cross. Okay. Yep. Can we add in the head? So knees, shoulders, knees, switch the shoulders, knees, tap the head. Knees, shoulders, knees, switch the shoulders, knees, tap the head, okay? Keep going with that pattern. Knees, shoulders, knees, switch the shoulders, knees, and head. Mm -hmm. Just want you to get that pattern before I build on. Okay, I'm gonna give you an option here for my standing athletes. So you'll go, uh, knees, shoulders, knees, switch the shoulders, knees, head, right foot crosses over left, left foot crosses over right, and repeat. Knees, shoulders, knees, shoulders. For my seated athletes, you're going to tap, so you'll go knees, shoulders, knees, switch the shoulders, knees, head, take, it the, take this or leave it, you don't have to take it. Tap your right foot with your left hand, oh, opposite. Then tap your left hand with your, oh my gosh, your left foot with your right hand. And then you start over. Knees, shoulders, knees, switch the shoulders, knees, head. Foot to opposite hand, foot to opposite hand, and repeat. Knees, shoulders, knees, switch the shoulders, Knees, head, foot to opposite hand, foot to opposite hand, and continue. Okay, so we're getting some bending, we're getting some rotation, we're crossing the center line of our body so the two sides of the brain can, can really speak to each other. I just want you to keep going with that pattern. And if you can go faster, try to go faster. So remember, my standing athletes are just doing right leg crossing over left and left leg crossing over right instead of the tap down. Yeah. Yeah, that looks good, everybody. Okay. As we do this now, I'm just going to lay her on one more time. I want you to hum. I won't make you do the ABCs backwards today, <laughs> but I just want you to hum. So lips are closed and you're trying to do this all through your nose. Mm -hmm. When you need to, you'll inhale through your nose and you'll continue to hum. Mm -hmm. You can hum a song, you could hum a kid's song, you could hum the ABCs, you could just hum one note. It will be harder if you hum a song. So if you want to challenge the brain just a little bit more, try to hum a song. Maybe something even simple like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. <laughs> Just do that one more time, one more time all the way through. Mm -hmm. 
and relax. Okay, awesome. How's everyone doing? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Okay, good, okay. Okay, awesome. Let's reach both hands up towards the sky. Take a nice dive forward. Hang out at the bottom, breathe into the back of your ribs. And then slowly roll yourself back up. Yep. Open your chest up towards the ceiling. Roll your arms open. Look up at the sky. Good. Let's find that check, recheck just one last time here. So we'll find arms coming up overhead. We'll do thoracic rotation. Good. We'll do cervical rotation. I felt better. We can do shoulder internal and external rotation. If you're a standing athlete, you can balance, you can do a sit to stand, a hip hinge, or a push up. So just checking in, noticing the difference between the beginning and the end. Okay. And then let's just kind of reset the body here. So we'll come back to a seated or a standing position. We'll close the eyes if that feels right. Dropping back into your breath. Inviting that breath to go a bit lower in your body. Trying to come back to nasal breathing if you weren't already. Go ahead and think of one thing you're grateful for today. Let's take one more inhale, one more exhale, and we'll open the eyes. Thank you so much for joining today, everybody. Throwing some new brain games at you. I hope it wasn't too much. Okay, I'll unmute everybody out. Am I forgetting anything?